Okay, so last time we were discussing about the bulk density of dispersed phase and as we said that bulk density is nothing but the mass of dispersed phase per unit volume of the mixture and based on that we have defined some formula and that was uh, rho d bar which is the bulk density is nothing but the del, uh, del dot m d upon dou v where v is the volume of the mixture, so complete volume and it can also be written as uh, rho d bar is equal to n where n is the number density multiplied by the mass of a single particle. So, in that way you can also find the number density or uh, sorry bulk density of the particle. Now, moving to the next the another important definition which we actually found or uh, we, we were about to discuss and we stopped the last class is about the inertial effect. Now, what do we mean by inertial effect? Uh, the inertial effect is the effect as the name suggests that there is a inertia. So, now we are discussing about the two phase flow or multi phase flow in which more than one phases are available and if suppose in a pipeline a fluid is flowing and uh, suppose air is flowing at a particular velocity and there is some particle which is suspended. Okay. So, suppose there is a one particle which is suspended. Now, if I change the velocity of the air by any means say suppose if I put a divergence here. Okay. So, if I put a divergence what will happen the velocity of air will change and with that ideally the velocity of particle should also change, but the problem is uh, sometimes because of the inertial effect the particle does not follow the path of the fluid exactly. So, suppose what will happen the if suppose there is a streamline flow and then what will happen the fluid will pass something like this. But it is not needed that the particle should also follow exactly the same path. This is say fluid path, the is not needed the particle should also follow the same path. It may be possible that because of the inertia, the particle may go straight, it does not move at all, it does not change the path and that is called the inertial effect. Okay. So, inertial effect is being defined is that basically because of the acceleration in the flow field and the particles are not able to follow the fluid motion and why they are not able to follow the fluid motion because of their own mass, they have certain mass and because of that because they are moving with a certain velocity they have certain momentum. So, they actually go with their momentum and they may not follow the path of the fluid exactly. Now, how much it deviates from the path of the fluid that is what is called the impaction or inertial effect. So, we have to find it out the two things the first is whether they will follow the path of the fluid or not and if they will not follow how much they will uh, kind of uh, deviate from their path. So, impaction effect or inertial effect need to be uh, found. Now, why this effect is important? because these effect is very critical particularly for the separation application. So, suppose if I want to separate there is some dust which is being suspended in the air or you are doing some uh, operation say in fluidized bed and gases are passed and those gases are actually carrying some of the fine particles or in a boiler we are passing the gas for the oxidation reaction of a combustion reaction and with the gas or with the flue gas some of the ash particle or soot particles are being carried away. So, what you need you have to actually separate those particles and those particles actually can be separate by using the mechanism of impaction. Now, how it is possible to separate what I have to do suppose if uh, there is a flow in which the particles are flu flowing or the fluid and particles both are flowing I need to just define in such a way I have to give the particle such a momentum that it should have some inertial effect and then it should say if there is a path here and I can if suppose I put some filter or some kind of a catch here where the particle will go and get stuck then what will happen the fluid actually will move this in an elbow kind of a shape this is the fluid, but if suppose there is a particle which is moving here because of the impaction it can go and hit on this wall. So, the there can be a separation now this can be desirable and this can actually worsely affect also it can be undesirable phenomena. So, what can possible possibly if you are not designing the system properly and you are having the flow of a gas and solid or liquid and solid then in the same bend what will happen the particle will go all the time and hit this bend. Now, the if they will hit it multiple time the erosion will occur and your bend may damage after some time. So, that is why it is very important to understand that how the particle will follow the path of the fluid. Now, again I am telling that it can be used for the separation mechanism to separate the particle clearly. So, that is the way 
the impaction has been studied and actually the impaction can be studied by the three quantities and that three quantities are relaxation time or we say it response time. We can also find the stop distance, the stop distance means where the particle will go and stop and third is the Stokes number. Now, we will define all these three separately and we will see the important of each phases, but the impaction generally is being defined with these three numbers okay, or these three values. Now, how these three values are defined? So, first is response time or relaxation time as its name suggests that what is the response time? Response time is the time which particle will take to respond to the change in the fluid velocity or the continuous phase velocity as the name suggests clearly. So, it is the momentum response because we are talking about the momentum, we are talking about the velocity. It is a momentum response time that relates to the time required for a particle or a droplet to change of the in the velocity of the continuous fluid. It means it is the time required a particle for a particle to respond to change in any particle velocity. So, before that it will not respond. It means what? It will continue its path. So, suppose if this is a bend again I am taking bend is a very simple example. If the part fluid is moving at it in this way and the particle response time is say very high then what will happen? Particle will not move in this side in this direction instead of going in this direction it will continue its motion in the same direction. So, what will happen? It will go and hit the bends. So, that will depends on the particle response time that how fast it can respond to the change in the fluid velocity. So, that is called particle response time. So, that is the one phenomena which actually describe that how the uh, relaxation factor or whether the impaction will play a role or not if it will play how much important role it will pay, play. So, that is the uh, definition of the response time. Now, how to calculate the response time? So, for that we can do a derivation. Now, how to do the derivation is a very simple thing. Suppose, if a particle for the same case is moving and it is moving horizontally. So, I am neglecting the effect of the gravity and buoyancy will be very, very small. So, what will happen if suppose there is a particle which is moving in horizontal direction in say direction of x. If suppose this is x, this is y, it is moving in x direction along with the fluid. So, the fluid is also moving and particle is also moving. So, what will happen? Say the fluid velocity is v and the particle velocity is u. So, these are the particle velocity, u is particle velocity. and this is fluid velocity. So, a fluid uh, is moving in which some particle is suspended and if I am assuming that the particle velocity is u meter per second, fluid velocity is v meter per second. If they are moving then what will happen? What are the forces which are going to act? So, if you see the forces which are acting because the motion is in horizontal there is not gravity is not going to play any role. If I neglect the buoyancy and I am just considering the motion in the horizontal direction or in the x direction, then the buoyancy will also not play a role. So, there will be two forces which will be acting. One is the particle momentum or particle inertia and that will be opposed with the drag force. So, I can write an equation which can say that m du by dt. So, rate of change in the momentum is nothing but that will be equal to the f d which is nothing but a drag force. So, you can say this F d is nothing but drag. Okay. Now, how the drag force are defined? We will revisit it again, but I hope in your undergraduate or in your basic uh, chemical engineering courses or basic engineering courses, this might have been introduced. The drag is nothing but it is half into C d, it is rho A u minus v square. So, because this both are moving, we are defining it based on the slip velocity. So, I am saying that it is u minus v and mod of u minus v. So, some book says that is u minus v square. I am writing it in the direction u minus v min to mod of u minus v, so that you can get the direction of the drag force. So, finally, these are the forces which is acting on the particle if it is moving horizontally. So, now we can what we can do? We can try to see that how to calculate the response time. So, we will try to define or derive the formula for the response time. Now, to do that we did the force balance the only problem is the C d value. 
as we know that the C D is a function of Reynolds number and if you keep on changing the Reynolds number the value of C D will change and that the value will be different for the laminar and turbulent flow or you can say the Stokes regime and Taylor regime or turbulent regime the values will be different. So, let us assume that the velocity is less and we are still in the uh, Stokes regime then the C D will be actually defined with the 24 by R E. Now, this Reynolds number R E is nothing but the Reynolds number. Okay. And this Reynolds number is defined based on the slip velocity. So, what will be the Reynolds number is this nothing but rho of continuous fluid d of particle u of particle. So, because the particle velocity is v u I am writing it as a u and this will be based on the slip velocity. So, you will say that u minus v upon mu of continuous. So, that is the Reynolds number the way it has been defined it has been defined based on the slip velocity. So, this rho is for the continuous fluid these two is for continuous fluid rho and mu and this is for the discrete phase or uh, discrete phase and the relative motion. So, that is the way the Reynolds number has been defined. So, we know that if uh, this is following in the Stokes regime or it means the Reynolds number is very very less or is less than 1 then C D can be written as 24 by R E and the whole equation can be further simplified as m d u by d t is nothing but half C D is 24 by R E and R E I am going to this is say R E and rho of particle okay, into area into u minus v to mod of u minus v. Okay. So, that is the way it is going to be uh, defined. Now, what is this area? Area is the area which is on the projected area. So, it means this area for a spherical particle will be nothing but pi by 4 d square. So, I will just open this Reynolds number and area and this will be equal to 12 upon Reynolds number is rho of continuous fluid into d of particle into u minus v okay. and then this is mu of c continuous because 0 d upon mu it will go up it will be rho p it will be pi by 4 d p square this is u minus v mod of u minus v. So, that is the way one can define this. Now, Reynolds number is defined based on the mod. So, I will write it here the mod. So, that it value should be positive. Now, if you solve this what will happen this two will be cancelled out okay? and we can write it in the more simplified form and this will be cancelled out 4 and this. So, this will be 3. So, we can write it 3 mu c it will be rho p into pi this d p 1 d p will be cancelled out it will be d p and u minus v and this will be rho p upon rho c. So, you will get a value which will be of this kind. Now, uh, if we see that sorry this is not uh, rho p this is the rho c actually. Okay. So, in that way this will be actually rho c and this rho c rho c will be cancelled out. Okay. So, I think here I have written it correctly yeah, it is rho c. So, this is the rho c. Now, if this 2 will be cancelled out what you will get is thrice mu c into pi d p u minus v or I will write it to a more familiar term which will be 3 pi into mu c d p into u minus v. So, if you see that that is the formula which you have used for the drag force in the Stokes regime and in terms of the arc it will be 6 pi mu r into v and now because based on the slip velocity it is two phase flow we are defining it based on the slip velocity. So, you are going to have that is m d u by d t is nothing but 3 pi mu c d p into u minus v. Now, what I am going to do I am going to differentiate uh, integrate it, but before that I would like to open this mass which mass is nothing but the mass of the particle. So, if this is mass of the particle it can be written as m p can be written as it will be the rho of particle into volume of the particle and volume of the particle for a spherical uh, particle it will be 5 by 6 d p q. 
so i will replace mp with that and if i do that mp if i replace with uh, this i can just write it instead of mp it will be rho p pi by 6 dp cube now i will just try to simplify it if we will try to simplify i will get the values it is like uh, pi pi will be cancelled out you will get du by dt will be equal to you just uh, bring everything here it will be 18 this pi will be cancelled out it will be mu c upon rho p okay now dp cube will be cancelled out so this will be upon d square dp square and uh, u minus v okay so this will be what is being turned out the equation and the value if you see this value this is the unit of this is the reciprocal of the time and that is called the response time so this is nothing but is called response time or relaxation time so the response time or relaxation time is being defined say if i say that response time by tau v if i represent then it is nothing but rho p into dp square upon 18 mu of continuous so this is called the response time okay so that's much time a particle will take if you are putting a particle in a system which is moving a gas which is moving so depending upon how much is the density of the particle what is the size of the particle and what is the viscosity of the gas it will have certain time it will take before it will respond to any change in the fluid motion velocity or fluid velocity now you see that it is function of the density it is function of the particle diameter and it is inversely proportional to the part uh, fluid viscosity it means what if the fluid viscosity is very high the response time is going to be low if your particle density is low then the response time is going to be the low if your particle diameter is low then the response time is going to be low so it means what if this times will be low particle will respond to the flow very fast if this time is very high particle will not respond to the fluid or it will respond very lately to any change in the fluid velocity or fluid motion or fluid direction so that is the way response time has been derived now it can be further continued and if i just want to find it out the stop distance i can say that du by dt was equal to if i just look here it was u minus v upon tau v so that is the way we can write it now if you do it it in this way what you will get you will get that 1 upon du upon u minus v is equal to dt upon tau v okay now if you do the integration of the same if i integrate it then what i will get i will get the function which will be in the form of ln so this will be ln u minus v will be equal to this will be t upon tau v this value so now if you do that t upon tau v value now what will happen i can uh, take the integral and it will be u minus v will be equal to e raised to the power t upon tau v so that will be what you will get as uh, the formula now mostly what will happen the u will be smaller v will be higher so this value is going to be negative so i can take that negative sign here uh, to reduce this value to make this value positive so finally you are going to get that u minus v is nothing but e raised to the power minus t upon tau v so that will be your overall uh, time which it will take uh, before the particle will uh, respond to the uh, motion and you can see that how the tau v is the time and how the u will change with the time so you will find it out that u and v correlation you can see that will change in the v how the u is going to be changed i hope this is clear that why we have taken it negative we have taken it negative because here the particle mainly is moving because of the gas velocity so u is going to be smaller than the v and because of that this value is going to be negative 
and if that is true I have to take the minus out and e raise to the power minus t by tau it will be there. So, once we are decaying the velocity we are changing the velocity the particle motion is also going to decay or particle motion is also going to change and we can calculate that how the motion change will take place. So, in that way we are uh, defining this. Now, if we have defined this we can also find it out suppose if the particle have been started with the initial velocity 0 then what will happen I can integrate the whole thing from 0 to say a velocity u if I do that what will happen if the time t equal to 0 u e will be equal to 0 I can calculate that what will be the value of uh, u and then we can say that at uh, time t equal to t if the velocity is u if you do that then what you will get you will just do this ln. So, you will get that u is nothing but it will be v into 1 minus e raise to the power t upon tau v. So, what you need to do you have to just integrate this this integral will be from 0 to time t and at 0 you can say the velocity is u uh, is 0 and at time t the velocity is u. So, if you do that calculation if you solve it you will get uh, the value of this kind and it will show you that how the particle velocity is actually going to change with the time. So, if you change the fluid velocity motion how the particle velocity is going to change. Now, from there you can find it out that whether the particle is responding to the uh, change in the fluid velocity and you can also track the velocity of the particle with the time. So, that is very very important very very critical and if you see that it is actually following if you uh, just try to revise your control it is actually following that when the u will be equal to v once the particle will change or it will be nearly equal to v. So, if you find that the e raise to the power if this value whatever we are saying that t minus v is equal to 1 then what will happen the e raise to the power 1 value will come it will be 1 upon 1 then this whole value will come 1 upon sorry uh, 2.736. So, this whole value will come as 63 percent is 63.2 percent, but for the sake of simplicity you can find that it is 63 percent. So, it means what that the momentum response time can also be defined as a time which is required to achieve the 62 percent of the particle velocity or 63 percent of the velocity uh, of the free stream velocity or of the uh, 63 uh, percent the part uh, the velocity of the free stream the when the particle will as find or will particle will attain that is called the response time. So, that can also be defined it in this way which is coming directly from this. So, what will happen u and p will be then how the response time will be defined. So, you can define the response time at it in this way. So, this is the another way to define the response time, but we will go with our own definition which says that it is nothing but the time required for a particle to follow or to respond to any change in the fluid velocity. So, that is the way we have defined this uh, tau v. Now, once the tau v is defined we have also defined that how the particle velocity will change with the time. So, now what you can do you can solve any problem in which I have the initial particle velocity is given if the fluid velocity is given and it is given that the flow is very small you can use this formula to calculate that with the time how the particle velocity will change. Now, once you know that with the time how particle velocity is changed you can also track the position of the particle that how much position how much distance it will travel before it will stop. So, in that way you can find it out that the penetration distance or stop distance. So, you can also calculate the stop distance for these particles that if they are moving at what distance it is going to stop. So, that is called the stop uh, distance and it has been defined actually the stop distance is nothing but is the L this the is nothing but the velocity into the tau v. So, if you have know the S stop distance is nothing but what is the velocity say is u into tau v. If you do that you will get the stop distance that what will be the final distance at which it will stop. But if you want to calculate that how the food plot will move or how the particle will move along the fluid path you can use this formula you can convert it to in terms of the velocity the u in terms of the you can calculate to the position and you can track that how the particle position say if there is a pipeline where there is elbow and the fluid is moving particle is also moving 
we can track that how the particle will start uh, following our, uh, the part uh, the path of the fluid. So, it means if you change the path of the fluid how fast the particle will able to accommodate that change. You can calculate that by using tau b, you can calculate the particle path line because calculating the position of the particle. You can also calculate uh, the particle velocity, how it will decay the velocity and what will be the final velocity it will get. So, all those things can be found with the stop distance also. So, you can also find that when the particle will go and finally, stop at some place. So, these all things can be handled can be completed. So, with this now similar to uh, particle momentum response time there is thermal response time also. So, particle thermal response time is nothing but the so, what we have discussed is the momentum response time. Similarly, in similar line we can discuss the thermal response time and thermal response time is nothing, but the response time needed by the particle to respond to any change in the temperature of the continuous fluid. So, if suppose the fluid is moving and I put certain a heating zone here at certain location and the fluid is moving what will happen the fluid temperature once it will come here it will start developing and you will see a proper fluid velocity. Now, if there is a particle here then the particle will take actually some time before it will respond to any change in the fluid flow in the any change in the temperature of the continuous fluid or of the fluid which is flowing. So, that is called the thermal response time and it can again calculate the way we have balanced the momentum or the force we can balance the energy and based on the energy balance we can calculate that what will be the response time which will be needed for the thermal or thermal what will be the thermal response time. Now, to just for the example that how to do that how to do the energy balance what will be the total energy contained by the particle it will be nothing but m c p dou t upon dou t. So, it means this capital T is the temperature small t is the time. So, that is the total energy any particle uh, is having or the total energy the particle can have. Now, this will be equal to nothing but the Nusselt number which is the number and uh, kind of responsible for the heat transfer it will be the pi k c k c will be the thermal conductivity of the continuous phase. and it will be d p into t p minus t c. So, once I say t p minus t c it is nothing but the temperature of the particle this is the particle temperature and this is the temperature of the uh, continuous phase. So, I will say that this is a gas phase temperature and this is particle phase temperature. So, you can calculate similar way that how much time it will take for the particle to respond to any change in the temperature. So, you can do all this balance and if you solve this you can find it out that what will be the thermal response time of the particle and just I am leaving it to you as an assignment and maybe we will do this as an assignment. The tau t is the thermal response time of the particle will be nothing but it will be rho p into C p d where the C p d is nothing but uh, the uh, heat capacity value for uh, discrete phase or the particle phase into d square upon 12 k c. So, this will be the particle term thermal response time and it is nothing but you have to just balance this open the m the way we have done in terms of the rho p into uh, v p v, v, v p is the volume of the particle and then m c p d p you have to write this and then you just equate it put the value of a Nusselt number in terms of the h d by 1 k and then you will solve it you will get that rho t is nothing but equal to rho p c p d d square upon 12 k c. So, it means what if I try to find it out the value of tau v upon tau t and just try to find it out. So, tau v is nothing but it was rho p d p square upon 18 mu c and tau t is nothing but it will be rho p into c p d d square upon 
12 kc. So, this is the way uh, this is ICPD it is this. So, if you solve it out it will be cancelled out many things and you will get that 2 by 3 it will be k c upon c p d. So, that you will get the value of tau v upon tau t sorry tau v upon tau t that will be the value which will tell you that whether the momentum response time is higher or thermal response time is higher and if you want to correlate it with the this uh, sorry this will be mu c p d there will be one mu which is missing here. So, it will become mu c p d. So, that is the way it will be found. So, if you want to find it out if you want to correlate it you can also correlate this with the parental number and uh, if you want you have to what you need to do you have to just multiply by uh, this uh, C P D up and down and then you can calculate the parental number of uh, continuous fluid. So, uh, you can do that you can write it in terms of the parental number also and if you write in terms of the parental number it will be nothing but 2 by 3 it will be C P C it means the heat capacity value for continuous phase it will be C P D into 1 upon parental number. Okay and uh, so this is the way you can uh, you can define now how this is being defined how what i have done to derive that i have just multiplied here in this equation so if i take that tau v upon tau t thermal response time is nothing but it comes 2 upon 3 this will be kc upon mu it will be cp t now, if I multiply with C P C up and down it means C P C then what will happen we know that C P mu by k that is nothing but is the parental number. So, this will be 2 by 3 it will be C P uh, C upon C P D and this C P this C P this mu upon k is going to be the parental number. So, we will say 1 upon parental number. So, similarly you can find the response time the way we have derived the things remain same you can find the response time you can find the momentum response time you can find the thermal response time the idea is that impaction it means if the fluid path is changing or fluid velocity is changing particle may take some time before it will respond to that change okay. and that is called the response time. Now, once we are talking about the momentum that is called momentum response time when we are talking about the temperature or the heat we will say that it is the thermal response time. So, that is the way the response time has been derived and one can use that response time to calculate that how the particle will behave and the same calculation can be used to calculate the stop distance the way I have told you earlier same calculation can be used to track the particle trajectory of particle motion same equation can be used to calculate the particle velocity. So, if you know this you can calculate how the particle will move with the time. Now, moving towards the next. So, we have defined response time, we have defined the stop time. Now, the third one is that Stokes number. Now, what is the Stokes number and uh, how it has been defined? So, a Stokes number is nothing but it is the ratio of response time to the flow characteristic time. So, Stokes number is represented with ST subscript k and uh, it is ratio of tau b upon tau f where the tau f is the flow characteristic time. Now, what do you mean by tau f flow characteristic time? So, suppose there is a fluid which is flowing in a pipeline is a fluid which is flowing in a pipeline and I have to calculate that what will be the characteristic flow time I will say that what is say uh, is the length suppose this is the timeline and suppose it is changing the dimension let us assume that it is changing the dimension and again it is going at it in this way. So, suppose a fluid is flowing here and the particle is also suspended now because the particle will fluid will move particle will also move along the fluid. 
Now, they will reach to this divergence section, they will go and diverge to a small section of throat and then again they will go to uh, again separate it and uh, they will kind of instead of contraction, now they will have expansion and the fluid will move out and particles would also move out. So, now if we find it out the tau f, tau f is will be nothing but the characteristic flow length. characteristic length divided by uh, the velocity. of the fluid. So, that is the tau f. So, the characteristic length in this type will be what is will be the length of the throat or you can say that. Uh, so, that will be the tau f. So, how much is the fluid uh, characteristic time will be there that is the time. So, you can calculate that the tau f tau v we already know we can calculate the tau v and we can calculate the Stokes number and to find it out that whether the particle is going to follow the path of the fluid or not. Now, if the Stokes number is very, very less than 1, if suppose as T k is very, very less than 1, it means what? It means the particle response time is very low compared to the fluid uh, uh, flow time. Okay? It means the characteristic time of the flow. It means what? The particle response time because it is very, very low, it will uh, response if the is very low, it means the particle has ample time or very long time to respond to the change in the fluid motion because tau v is very, very small. Okay. So, it means what the tau v is very small, tau f is very high. So, particle length, so characteristic time of the fluid is much higher compared to the characteristic time of the particle. So, it means what particle will just follow the path of the fluid, it will have ample time to respond. So, in that case, if this is less than 1, the particle will actually flow and it will just change stay here and then go out. So, that will be the path of the particle exactly same will be the path of the fluid also. So, it has ample time to respond to any change. Now, if the Stokes number is say is very, very high then 1 then uh, what does it mean that particle response time is very, very high compared to the flow characteristic time. It means the flow characteristic time is very, very low and particle response time is very high. It means what? In that case, particle will have no time to respond to any change in the uh, fluid velocity. Okay? So, it will have its own inertia, own impaction is going to work, it will move with uh, its own inertia and it will not respond to any change in the fluid uh, velocity or fluid direction. So, what will happen for the similar case now, if suppose this is the case. Now, what will happen? The particle will go and it will just hit the wall. So, that is the way it is not going to respond to any change in the uh, fluid motion. So, though the fluid motion may change, but particle is not going to do anything, it is just going and hitting the ball. So, that is called once will happen when the Stokes number is very, very more than 1 and if Stokes number is less than 1, then particle will have ample time and it will respond to all the changes you will make with the fluid velocity. So, that is the way we can find the uh, impaction effect. So, we can calculate the stop distance, we can calculate the response time and we can calculate the Stokes number. So, in that way <coughs> you can find the effect of impaction with the help of Stokes number, with the help of uh, response time, one can also derive that how the particle will behave, how the particle location will change, the position can be calculated. One can also calculate that with the time how the particle velocity will change. So, you can see that whether the particle is accelerating or it is de accelerating. If you know how it is de accelerating, you can calculate that what will be the stop distance when the particle will de accelerate this much that the velocity of the particle will go to 0. So, all those calculations can be done and the similar way as I said the stop distance has been defined, it is nothing but the initial velocity of the particle into the relaxation time. So, stop distance s is nothing but what is the initial velocity of the particle. Now, I am saying that particle velocity as a u. So, I will denote it as say u naught into tau v and that is nothing but the stop distance. So, you can also calculate that if you know the tau v after how long the particle will actually stop. So, this u naught is the initial velocity of the particle.
So, these three quantities together can actually help to track the motion of the particle to find that if the particle want to stop where the particle will stop. So, we can suppose if I ask a question that uh, there is a wind high speed wind in which some particles has been suspended and let us assume that initial velocity of the particle is say 1 meter per second and can you tell me after how much time that particle will stop if I give you the density of the particle, if I give you the velocity of the particle, initial velocity of the particle, if you give the velocity of the fluid, if I give you the properties of the fluid it means the density and viscosity you can actually calculate that after this much length the particle will actually stop it will not move. So, in that way uh, we can calculate that we can also see that how the deacceleration will take place if the particle velocity is reducing and we can also track the motion of the particle a position of the particle because once you have the velocity you can just do the dx by dt or d, uh, dz by dt or dy by dt and in integrate it to get the velocity of uh, position of the particle. So, everything can be done by using this three. Okay. Now, the next thing which is uh, critical in multiphase flow now we are defining it. So, in the definition the one of the most critical thing is that whether the flow is dilute or dense. So, actually speaking or frankly if you see that the whole multiphase can be divided in two parts and the treatment will be entirely different for these two parts. Once the flow is dilute and another once the flow is uh, dense. Now, there is a critical difference between these two. Now, what is the difference? Once as the name suggests dense means the fraction of the discrete phase will be very high that is called a dense uh, flow and when the fraction of uh, discrete phase is very low and uh, that is called the dilute flow. So, that is the broadly definition has been defined the way the dense and dilute flows are being defined in the multiphase flow and the whole treatment is different we will see the treatment once we will discuss the dilute flow and dense flow particularly in the gas solid flows we will see that how those uh, differences will occur once the flow is di dilute how you will treat the flow or how you will model the flow or how you will which technique can be used to uh, see the flow or kind of diagnosis the problem and if the flow is dense how it will be modeled or how it will be investigated. So, we will see that later on, but what is the definition and how you are going to quantify that whether the flow is dilute or dense it is very very critical and a rough definition or you can say the layman definition is if the discrete phase, phase fraction is very high the particle is actually uh, uh, dense the flow is actually dense if the discrete phase fraction is very low less than 5 percent or so the particle or the flow is called as a dilute flow. But these are the vague definition there are certain concrete definition and terms to find that whether the flow is uh, uh, dilute or dense and the concrete definitions whatever it is is given here and it says that once or dilute dilute dispersed phase is one in which the particle motion is controlled by the fluid forces. It means what if the say there is a fluid which is flowing in a pipeline and there are only few particles suspended say 4 or 5 particles which are suspended here. Now, what will happen because the number of particles are very very small the fluid is going to dominate the uh, motion of the particles. Okay. So, I am not considering the particle uh, response time here I am not considering that the wind and all these things are there. If that is not there then what will happen the particle motion will be primarily depend on the fluid and it is actually you can say that it will depend on the drag as we have already seen that if one particle is suspended how you can calculate how the particle motion will take place. So, particle motion will finally depend on the uh, fluid only. So, that is the cause as a dense uh, or dilute phase. So, once the particle motion is mainly governed or controlled by the fluid forces like drag it is called a dilute flow. Now, a dense phase just contrary to each other suppose if I pack it with lot of particles say if I just put lot of particles here inside then what will happen the particle motion actually will not only depend on that how the fluid motion is taking place, but it also depends on that how these two particles are moving together how these particles are moving together are they having a collision if they are having a collision how they are responding to that collision. So, whether they break whether it is a complete elastic collision whether it is a inelastic complete inelastic collision whether it is in between the elastic and inelastic viscoelastic kind of a collision 
whether they are changing the dimensions after the collision, whether they are uh, kind of changing the velocities after they are having collision. So, the particle motion will not only depend on the fluid forces, the particle forces will also have a very dominant role like particle collision or particle particle collision we talk about that, then the flow is called as a, a dense flow. So, that is the major dif difference between the dilute flow and dense flow. Now, how to quantify these all are definition once I am saying that the particle forces are dominating or uh, whether the discrete phase fraction these all are qualitative the quantitative uh, we do not have the picture till now. So, how to find the quantitative that whether it is dilute or dense phase. So, for that we actually see the ratio and we see the ratio of tau v upon tau c where tau v is nothing but the response time. and tau c is nothing but it is the collision time. Collision time. Now, how to calculate tau c we will see that. So, qualitatively uh, we can calculate the whether the phase is uh, dense or dilute based on these two ratios. So, tau v by tau c. So, if the tau v by tau c is less than 1 the flow is dilute, if it is greater than 1 the flow is dense. Now, if you see that value it means greater than 1 means what? The response time is very high compared to the uh, your tau c collision time it is very very low. If the collisional time is very very low it means what? What you understood about that? That the particles are densely packed with each other or very densely packed then only the collision time will be low. So, how the collision time is being defined? It is the time between the two successive collision of the particles. So, that is called the uh, collision uh, time. Okay. So, that is uh, the two successive time between the collisions or two successive collisions of the particle is called the collision time. Now, if this is greater than 1 collision time is uh, this overall tau v upon tau c ratio is greater than 1. It means what collision time is very very small. If the collision time is very small it means the particle will have a very frequent collisions and that is possible only if they are packing fraction of the particle is very high it means the fraction of the particle is very high, it means it is going to be a uh, kind of a dense phase or dense flow. Opposite way around if we see that tau v upon tau c is very very less, less than 1, then it means what? The tau c value is very high, the tau c value will be high only if the frequency of the collision is less and it will be less only if the particles are very far from each other. So, what we need? We need to actually find with this we can classify that whether the flow is dilute or dense, but what I need is the value of tau v and tau c. Now, we already know how to calculate the value of tau v. So, if I know my fluid system, if I know my particle, if I know the uh, diameter of the particle, then I can easily calculate as rho p into d p square upon 18. we can easily calculate the response time. The only problem is how to calculate the collision time that is tricky. Now, once you calculate the collision time you can find it out without doing any experiment or without physically seeing to the things you can say that whether the flow is uh, going to be dilute or the flow is going to be dense. So, to calculate the uh, this uh, collision time we will use the basic collisional approach or uh, theory of the collision of frequency and that theory of collision frequency has been actually derived with the granular temperature theory. We will discuss that uh, theory later or kinetic theory of granular flow which we will discuss later and uh, we will try to see that uh, how the collisions has been found by using a very simple approach which is being used also in the kinetic theory of granular flow also in the kinetic theory of the gases both the things where this collision frequency can be calculated exactly in the similar manner and how to do that we are just going to see that. So, to calculate the uh, collision frequency what we need to do we have to assume a system and let us assume that I have a system I am making a particle which is very big. And let us assume that this is my one particle which is going to move. So, I am assuming that this only particle is moving. Okay. And let us assume that it is moving because we are talking about the relative velocity say it is moving with the velocity v r where v r is the relative velocity 
and we are assuming right now that only one particle is moving at a time and rest of the particles are constant. Okay. So, that is the assumption which we use in uh, kinetic theory of granular flow also, we also in is use in the kinetic theory of the gases. So, what I am assuming that suppose there is a system in which suppose this is this pipeline or system in which some particles are suspended and I am assuming that only one particle is moving rest everyone is stationary and I am giving a velocity of the particle this particle to V r which is the relative velocity. It means I am assuming that other velocities or other particles are also moving physically they are not changing their position. Okay. So, in that way we are just defining that how the particle is moving. Now, what will happen once the particle will move suppose the diameter of this particle is d suppose this particle is d diameter then what will happen once it will move it will form a collisional cylinder. Now, why it will form a cylinder the reason is uh, once it is moving say it is moving in this direction in this circular pipe and the particles are spherical then what will happen it will travel certain distance. So, let us assume that it is uh, traveling certain distance. Now, how much distance it will travel what will be the distance that is very obvious that if the particle uh, velocity is uh, v r then in a time t or d t it is going to travel a distance l which is nothing but v r into d t. So, that is the distance it will travel and that l is nothing but this. Now, during the travel it will have some collision with the other particles. Now, I have already assumed that the particles other particles are stationary they are not changing their position only one particle is changing the position. So, on the with which, which particles this particle will start having going to have a collision. It means what are those particles or whose are those particles with whom it is going to have a collision. Now, that can be determined by the collisional cylinder dimensions. So, collisional cylinder length I have already calculated that is v r into d t it means time delta t or d t is very small time it will move a distance say d l and that d l distance is given here. Now, with whom it will is going to have the collision only with the particle if suppose this diameter is d it will have a collision with a particle which is coming in the 1 r is space. It means the particle is suppose all the particles are having the same dimensions it means I am assuming that all the particles are having same dimensions first second I am assuming that all other particle except one is not changing their location. and particle is moving with relative velocity v r. So, these are what we have assumed that the particles uh, are having the same dimensions it means all the particles is of have the same dimensions d. Uh, then second that uh, the particle other than one particle or rest other particles are stationary and their positions are not changing it means the velocity of the other particles are 0 and I mean allotting a velocity v r which is the relative velocity of the particle to the particle which is moving. Now, once I allotted that what will happen it will during its path say for a small time delta t it will travel certain distance and that distance will be nothing but the d l and which we have already discussed that that is not going to be something, but it is going to v r into d t. So, in a very uh, small time it will travel certain distance that is a distance is d n, but during this distance traveled it will have collision with the other particles. Now, which particle it will have the collision with the particle which is following uh, falling between the one diameter of the particle. It means what? Suppose, if I am just writing this as a separately say this is my particle path if any particle which is b like that or which is inside of this is going to have a collision. Now, what is this? This will be nothing but 
if the particle say it is not going to have the collision any particle center which is actually lying from a distance at 1 diameter. So, any particle center which will be lying on a distance within the 1 diameter of the particle from the center of the particle it is going to have the collision with it. Okay. So, let me again clarify it. So, suppose these are the particles, okay. this is say let me erase it and then again kind of draw it to have more clarity on it. Now, suppose I am just zooming this picture here, this, this whole portion I am just zooming here. So, one particle we have assumed that there is only one particle which is moving okay, and it is moving for a particular distance so for a small time. So, say this is traveling a distance of L d L this is the distance it is traveling. Now, during its path it will have a collision with the other particle. Now, who which particle it is going to have a collision with the particle suppose this is the diameter which is d. Okay. So, this will be this distance will be what it will be d by 2 d by 2. So, this will be the d by 2 distance which is actually nothing but the radius d by 2. Okay. So, this is the center line radius. Now, any particle suppose which is following their center. So, which is their center is it in such a way that the center of this particle is at a difference at a distance of d from the center of this particle. So, say let this is the assume that as the center of the particle. So, if this distance is also equal to the d, if any particle which is following within 1 diameter of the particle which is moving. Okay, and please remember 1 diameter from the center of the particle not from the wall. So, from the edge of the particle 1 radius and from the center of the particle 1 diameter. If any one any particle which is following within that it is going to have a collision with this particle. So, suppose if I draw a line here and I draw a similar line here. So, any particle which will be fall within this is going to have the collision with this particle any particle which is falling outside even like that, it is not going to have any collision with the particle because this will not touch each other. Okay. So, in that way we have defined the collisional uh, dimensions or you can say the collisional diameter and that collisional diameter will be nothing but the 2 d and collisional length will be nothing but the v r into d t. So, suppose now if I come back to the same place I will say that a collision cylinder will form and any particle which is following within this cylinder is going to have a collision with the particle. So, I can find it out that how many number of collision the particle will have. Now, how to find the number of collision? If suppose that the packing density or number density of the particle which is there present in this pipeline or in this system is n. So, n is the number density and we have already defined the n as nothing but number of particle n divided by v or dou n by dou v where n is this is the number of particle per unit volume. So, you can calculate that how much uh, is the number density is particle if that is known then what we can do we can find it out that how many number of collision or uh, particle which is moving in that system is going to have. Now, that number of particle which is going to be present. So, for that what I am going to first calculate that this is my collisional dimensions. Okay. This is my collisional cylinder one particle which is moving there are some other particles is available at the some particles are actually out of the system and this is my collision cylinder. So, if I know the number density of the system first what I want to find it out that number of particles which are present within this collisional cylinder. Now, how to calculate that that number of particle within this we can say that dou n and dou n is nothing but number density into dou v or well volume of the uh, collisional cylinder and the volume of the collisional cylinder will be nothing but it will be pi this diameter this whole diameter is actually 2 d or 2 d p I will write. So, that you do not get confused that d p is nothing but the diameter of the particle. So, the radius will be d p you can say that pi it will be d p square 
now we have to multiply with the length now length is nothing but this length and that length is nothing but if the particle is moving with a speed vr then it will be vr into dt so it will be this d square into vr into dt so this will be the number of particle is going to present inside the collisional cylinder now number of particle present inside the collisional cylinder means that many number of collision it is going to have because whatever the particle is present within the collision cylinder it is going to have a collision with it now i can write in terms of the frequency so that i can get the collisional frequency now if i have the number density i can write do n upon do t is nothing but n pi dp square into vr okay and this do n upon do t is nothing but the number of part collision per unit time it means it is going to be the frequency of the collision i will write it as fc xc is nothing but is the collision frequency and that is going to be equal to uh, that uh, uh, this is uh, n uh, this is going to be equal to n pi dp square into vr so that is going to be the collisional frequency of the particle so this many frequency this will be the frequency of the collision okay now what we are interested is we are interested in, in the tau c and tau c is what collision time so if i have the frequency i can find it out what is collision time and how we can find it out because we know that frequency is inversely proportional to the time so this will be nothing but fc will be equal to 1 upon tau c so this is collision time and this is the collision frequency so i am going to have both now i will just modify it so tau c is nothing but it is going to be 1 upon fc and that is going to be 1 upon uh, n pi dp square into uh, your vr that is going to be the your collisional time okay so this is your collision time and n please remember is nothing but this n is nothing but the number density now whether the flow is dilute or flow is uh, dense what we need to find we need to find the ratio of tau b upon tau c now tau b upon tau c if it is less than 1 then the flow is going to be dilute now if we do that tau b by tau c what i am going to do is i am just going to calculate the value tau b by tau c now tau v is nothing but it is rho p into dp square upon 18 mu c and tau c is nothing but it is n 1 upon n into pi dp square into v r so this is going to be the ratio of tau b upon tau c now what we can do we can solve it further and we can instead of number density because that is sometimes very difficult to calculate or to find inside the multiphase flow system but the calculating the bulk density is relatively easier as we already know that if you know the volume fraction you can calculate the bulk density i can write this in terms of the and in terms of the bulk density and how to write that we know that the bulk density rho d bar is nothing but is equal to number density into mass of one particle so that is number density we have already introduced that so number density into mass of one particle okay so if we do that mass of number density and mass of one particle uh, we can write it now mass of one particle we can again calculate this will be n the mass of one particle is nothing but rho of particle into v of particle where v particle is nothing but the volume of particle and volume of particle if the particle is spherical can be written as n rho p it will be pi by 6 dp cube that will be equal to rho d bar so we can replace this place uh, in terms of the rho d bar so if you want to write that then what we have to do this n so i will just uh, try to simplify this equation further here so this tau v upon tau c 
and I will write it, it in such a way that we can separate this uh, things together. I will write these terms together actually. So, I will write n, I will take rho p, I will take pi, I will take d p cube, I will write d p cube into d p okay, and then I will write it as d p v r and d p. So, I have just break it and I will write here as 3 uh, this 18 6 into 3 of mu c. Now, if you see that this is n rho p pi d p cube upon 6 this whole term is nothing but is equal to the rho d bar or you can say is the bulk density. So, it will be rho d bar into v r into d p upon thrice mu of c that is nothing but tau v upon tau c. So, now if we do this again I will write it separately tau v upon tau c and that tau v upon tau c is nothing but rho d bar into d p into v r upon thrice mu c. Now, if the flow is dilute then what then this value should be less than 1 if this value is less than 1 you can say that the flow is dilute if this value rho d bar d p v r upon thrice mu c if this is greater than 1 the flow is dense. Okay? So, you can now classify the flow is dilute or flow is dense and it can be further seen in terms of the particle diameter. So, suppose if I do it I can say that d p is uh, less than thrice mu c upon rho d bar into v r. If this is correct if the particle diameter is less than this uh, number or this quantity the flow is going to be the dilute if it is more than that the flow is going to be the uh, dense. So, these are the definition one can use to find that whether the flow is dilute or the flow is dense. So, that is the whole classification one can do with the finding the dilute phase and dense phase system. So, uh, this can be uh, done properly. So, what we have discussed now till now we have discussed that different terms terminology which we are going to use we have discussed about the impaction in impaction we have discussed about the uh, stopping time relaxation time or stop distance relaxation time and then Stokes number then we have tried to again divide the flow multiphase in two class major classes dilute flow and dense flow in the dilute flow we have defined and we have tried to see that how to find that whether the flow is dilute or not and for that we have done the collisional cylinder we have found we have taken the collision frequency fundamental and based on that we have calculated the collisional time and we have found the correlation which will tell that whether the particle is uh, going is uh, the diameter is dilute whether the flow is dilute or the flow is dense. So, this is the basic definition of the multiphase flow or basic classification of the multiphase flow. Now, there are uh, certain other things also which we would like to uh, cover I would uh, like to cover, uh, cover as a basic example and it is very critical to analyze the multiphase flow reactors that I will do in the next time.